All right, question for Coach Hillsman. Yeah. Up front on the left. Coach, uh, has it been easy for you to, you know, throw everything into facing Nebraska when the players may have been looking ahead to, to maybe getting a rematch with South Carolina? Not at all, because we haven't looked ahead at all. And and to be quite honest, we we're not we're not in a position. We have a, we're in a, we're in a, we're in an eight nine game. We're not in a in a in a game that we don't have a formidable opponent in front of us. So I haven't looked ahead at all. And Don's too good, so we're not going to come out and do the same thing we did the first time and keep the game close like that. She's not that kind of coach. She's going to make an adjustment, and she's going to be ready, ready for that. So that's not going to be our game plan. Even if we get to that point, we're not going to do the same thing that we did last game because she's a very good coach. And, and to be honest with you, I'm trying to beat – I'm Nebraska. I have no idea what South Carolina has done forward from our game except for them winning the championship the other night because obviously everyone saw that and I watched a little bit of that game on TV because I'm a women's basketball fan. But other than that, I have I have not looked at South Carolina at all because we got to beat Nebraska and they're a very good basketball team. Question on the back left. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm gonna, okay, go ahead. T, back on TV. <laughs> Coach, when you saw this bracket sort of unfolded and, and saw where you were going, were you happy with your seating and the fact you were going to a place where, let's face it, USC has been unbeatable at home the last two years, so to get out of this sub-regional is going to take a lot from this group that you have. I was happy to be playing. I think a, I think a lot of a lot of schools that, aren't, that are not sitting in this seat right, right now would love to be playing the Chicago Bulls at this point, it does not matter. You want to be playing basketball on this, on this time of year. So I, I don't get caught up into, in, into seedings and to where you place that because I don't get it. I don't understand it. So things I can't control, I don't try to control. I told our kids the best thing that we can do to get a number one seed is, is to go undefeated. Then we know we'll probably get a number one seed. I said anything from that, you got to go where they, where they, where they place you. We, we determine our fate by how many games and we win or lose. So I'm just happy just to be playing. But to be honest, we, we've seen everything from a six seed to an eight seed, and we got the eight, and we're here, we, and we got a great opponent. So we're, so we're very fortunate and very happy to be able to compete in this tournament. Question on the right side. What, what were the things that hurt you in your last game against Wake Forest, and are those concerns going forward? Oh, we didn't score. So that's, 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 that's it. When you shoot 20, 20% and you can't, you can't play the way we play. We are we are a pressing basketball team, so we need to we need to score the ball to get into our press, get to the free throw line to get into our press. Or quite honestly, if if we can throw the ball away, we need to throw the ball up in the row Z, so we can set our defense. We don't we don't need live ball turnovers. When you have live ball turnovers, or the game stays live, it's kind of hard to press that way. So we gotta we gotta score the basketball to be able to to get into our pressure. I thought Wake Forest did a very good job. Um, defensively, and we didn't we didn't score the ball at the rate that we needed to. I think that if you look at the end of that game when we started scoring, the game turned around and we and we got our pressure applied and got the game to within one possession in about two and a half minutes, and that was that was the key t to that game. Questions up front. Coach, and Nebraska also had a pretty significant injury midseason when their point guard went down. They had to readjust their game plan. Yeah. What have you seen from them since that point, and and how much different are they? Well. Obviously, Rachel Terrio is an unbelievable player. I mean, she is, she is a tremendous. She actually played in the same AAU organization with Alexis Peterson. So I watched her play through high school and through the AAU. She's a tremendous, tremendous point guard. I mean, she's incredible. I love watching her play. And, and, it's, and it's tough when you, when you go back and we watch their games when she was playing and, and see how good they are. And then you watch them now, and they're still that good because they have four seniors. And their seniors have really stepped up, and they're playing really solid basketball. So obviously, they are a different team without Rachel, just like we're a different team without, without Brittany. But, but we both got here by, by winning important games and, and playing solid basketball. So I think they're a very solid basketball team. And they are going to be different without Rachel, and, and we're going to be different without our kid. Question in the back right on camera. Uh, with that Wake Forest game, I know sometimes coaches say that losses can be blessings in disguise. Um, do you think in some ways that can help your team come into this tournament off that loss as kind of a wake-up call and maybe motivate your team even more? Uh, I don't think losing is a blessing. It's always funny when people use the word blessing and losing because I don't 
know in the Bible, the Bible talks about prosperity and prospering, and it talks about losing. <laughs> so I think people got to stop using losing and blessing in the same sentence because I don't look at it as a blessing. I'd rather win them all and not, and not be in a situation to where you're not really trying to, where you're trying to figure out where, you, where you're going to be and uh, what you're going to do. So I don't look at it that way. We want to win games and try to get in, get as many wins as possible going into this tournament. But, but I thought that, that losing that game did allow us to get some rest, obviously, and got our, we, we got, got a little break, got back in the gym and got going. So hopefully we haven't gotten rusty. We, we still have our legs and still have some wits about us to be able to play well. More questions? Yep. Back right again. Coach, I know uh, Coach Bayheim has been someone that's influenced you a lot as a coach since you came to Syracuse. Um, what was your reaction to uh, the announcement yesterday that he'll be retiring in three years? Uh, no reaction. You know, we, we're not, we're not, we're not looking at that. You know, we're 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 here, and we're and we're playing basketball, and it's our responsibility and, and, and it's our job to take care of our business on the court and to and to win our game. And you know, we're not going to comment on things that's going on at home. I think everybody sees the, sees the Syracuse on our on our chest, and right now the circus on our chest means that we have a game tomorrow at 7.30 that we need to come out and win, and, and that's kind of what, what we're focused on right now. Question on the left side. Coach, obviously uh, the injury to Henderson, uh, sorry to see that happen. Uh, how do you feel that changes your team? I noticed uh, Slim played her second most minutes of the season against uh, Wake Forest. Do you see your starters having to play more minutes, or? You know, just how different is your team without someone like, like Henderson who's not available for you? Well, it's very different because she plays three positions for us. She plays the point and plays both both wing positions. And in our defense, she plays some down low, and she can play multiple positions in our press. It's, it's, it's tough. Obviously, when you, when you have to move players around and try to recreate schemes and things like that, or, or even trying to redefine roles in the last three games of your season, it's, it's, it's tough, and, and it was a tough blow. But I think that that's why you try to recruit deep players. And I think that when you look at your bench, you have to – I try to envision, envision seven starters. And everyone has a starting five. I say we have a starting seven. I think you have to have seven players that can start for you at any minute and be ready to step up and play. And I think that your players, honestly, eight, nine, and ten is what wins championships and what wins big games. One through seven, most teams have a very good one through seven. What can your eight, nine, and ten do to help you step up and – Make some make some shots and get some stops and do some things on the floor that can that can help you win. So for, for us, it's more about our eight, nine, and ten than it is about anything else and trying to redefine um, some roles. Right side. When you said uh, Nebraska had a good concept and scheme, what did you mean specifically about that? Well, they 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 get set up into the areas and into the zone that's that's. That's kind of dead areas, and we call them dead areas, and we call them gray areas. They get into the mid post, they get into they get into like that, in, into that shallow short corner area. So you have to have some kind of scheme, um, um, to combat that. And they do a very good job of of getting the ball moving. And when they get the ball into those areas, it puts your kids in a little bit of of a of a situation of on who has this and, and who's who's going to take that. So they so they really mess with your scheme a little bit, and they do a very very good job. It's, it's funny because we look at teams like this and we and we play them and then we say, man, this is hard to guard. So that becomes our zone offense. So we're going to take two or three of their sets and run them next year. And somebody zone us, we're going to run them this year. So if they go zone, we're going to run their offense against them because we know it pretty good now. <laughs> and they and they do a very good job. And it's really hard to guard. And I think in that in those spots too, it's their personnel because they can they they can shoot the ball in a high post. I mean, they're short corner players they have quick triggers, so it's hard to get down there and get that short corner trap. They just do. A, I mean, it's, 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 it's fun to watch, and you, and you find yourself watching them execute, and you're watching tape, and you figure out, oh, man, we we great to play them, so we got to figure out how to guard this stuff. But, but they're a good basketball team, and she does a very good job getting them in areas where they can score. Any more questions for Coach Hillsman? Thank you, Coach. Thank you.